Okay, welcome, my dear friends. So, within uh, three days or four days, we'll go into some of our PG entrance free online coaching and also other competitive exams like JLDL and uh, Gurukul, uh, Gurukul uh, especially JLDL and PGT uh, examination also. So, in this regard, today's our eminent resource person, we would like to invite Dr. Uh, Pamur, Pamuraju. Dr. Pamuraju Manjula Madam Garu, Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, RBVRR Women's College, Autonomous, one of the prestigious institutions in Twin Cities and the oldest institution. So, Madam has used experience, more than 18 years experience, uh, botany faculty, eminent uh, botany fraternity. So, Madam, please welcome and uh, share your screen. Start your session, madam. Okay. You, After sir. this class, uh, I will continue the class. Okay, madam. Please welcome. Okay. Thank you, sir. Madam, your voice is very low. If possible, please uh, increase your voice. Okay. Sir, is it visible screen? Yeah, screen is visible. Your voice is very low, madam. If possible, please increase your voice. Okay, sir. So Sorry. today's topic is yes. wood anatomy. So different type, uh, types of wood and uh, economic importance of tectonic. So, generally wood means that is secondary xylem, it is called as the wood. So, introduction about this wood. So, generally in most dicotyledons and gymnosperms. So, the generally we see the uh, stems are in increase, they are in thick, very thick when compared to monocotyledons. So, this is due to the secondary growth. So, in most dicotyledons and gymnosperms, the stems increase in girth by the activity of lateral meristems, that is vascular cambium. So, a tree stem consists of mainly when we observe the this secondary dicotyledonous wood. So, when we observe this here three area, we can uh, we can identify the three areas. That is central one, it is the pith and xylem and the bark, brown colored one that is the bark and in the center xylem when we take the transfer section. So, the central pith generally it is usually bare visible. That is, it is we can easily identify and does not increase in size through the life of the tree. Where a cylinder of a wood that is known as a scientifically as a xylem, which varies in diameter with age and rate of the growth. So, and the finally the bark sheath that is that can be again subdivided into inner bark and outer bark. So, the new wood. The new wood and inner bark are added each year. That is, uh, inner side, inner bark and the in wood xylem is added each year by the activity of this secondary growth. So, the new bark production is relatively small compared with the new wood production. So, new bark, that is, outer layer is very, um, growth is very less when compared to the inner wood production. And bark is continually being shed to the outside. So, it will be um, shed up and new bark will be produced. So, thus the older trees, the greatest volume of the stem that is the wood only. That is the main wood means here the xylem. So, since new wood is added to the outside of the existing wood, so the oldest wood is close to the pith and the most recent is close to the bark outer side. So, as here, Growth is taking place outside. So, here um, due to this, here the compression of the pith also occurs. So, the initiation of the secondary vascular tissues which occurs after the maturation of. So, generally secondary growth which starts after the maturation of the primary xylem and ploium. So, at this stage, the cambium is represented by a single layer of cells. So, during the secondary growth, this cambium, which is represented as a single layer of cells and the primary tissues, which lying outside the secondary vascular tissues, are subjected to 
pressure from the inner side of the inlet. So due as the growth is increasing, here the pressure occurs inside the uh, inside the tissues. So due to which the primary phloem is crushed and becomes non-conducting. So the cortex can uh, persist for a longer time as it increases. As it in, uh, as it increases in circumference by the cell division and by the cell uh, expansion, so the epidermis may also be persist through the cell division and cell cell enlargement to accommodate the diameter. So which increases as a result of the second. So during the second, so we already discussed about this secondary growth. So during which here the um, production of secondary xylem and secondary phloem will occur. That is secondary xylem towards inside and secondary phloem towards outside. Small amount of secondary xylem towards inside and less amount of secondary phloem towards outside. So in most plants with continued secondary growth, so these outer tissues are completely crushed by the formation of periderm so within them so during the secondary so due to which here due to the growth here outer outer tissues are crushed so these dead peripheral layers are eventually eliminated by the decay or by the abscission so this outer layer that is the bark which is uh, removed easily whereas okay so next one is the growth rings so the secondary xylem in the stems of perennial plants generally commonly consist of the concentric layers when concentric layers so each one of which represent a seasonal increment so when we take the when we take the transverse section of the wood our logs so we can observe the rings inside this so these concentric layers so these are formed due to seasonal increment that every year so one ring is formed so in transverse section of the axis so these layers which are appear as a rings and are called as these are called as the annual rings or growth rings so every year here the one ring here the formation of one ring occurs so due to this is due to so each layer which represents the growth of the one year so the width of the growth rings which varies greatly and it also depends upon the rate of the growth of the tree but every year so due to the uh, every year so one ring uh, is formed. So here again when we observe this so some here these are some dark colored ones and light color in between the dark colored one one also present. Okay so these are called as so so here these are called as a sapwood and hardwood. Excuse me, madam. Your voice is not audible. Madam. Hello? Hello? Madam. Your voice is not audible. Madam. Manjula, madam. Sir, one minute, one minute. Okay. So generally the activity, sir, now it is it okay? Yes, madam. Yes. The activity of the generally uh, the activity of the cambium which takes place only during the spring and uh, summer season, thus giving rise to the growth uh, growth in diameter of the wood plant. So in spring or summer, the cambium is more active and forms a great number of vessels with wider cavities. So in winter or atom, 
So uh, there is a less needed. So the less need of vessels for the sap transport. So here the cambium is less active. So in summer it is more active, whereas in winter it is less active. So due to which here uh, early wood and late wood. So early wood means the wood which developed in the summer or spring season. It is called as the spring wood or early wood. So early wood is inner layer of the growth rings and the early wood zones of the these are the zones of a growth ring and it a generally it can typically consist of thin walled large diameter cells and also appear lighter in color so the light colored one are early wood so generally these are formed during the summer or spring season so there is the late wood the wood which is formed in winter or atom season it is known as the atom wood or late wood and the late wood is it is the outer layer of the growth ring and the late wood Jones thick wall, smaller diameter cells and also appear darker or brown shade in color. So generally when we observe here, so this dark one is late wood. Okay, so this one light colored ones are the light color ones are the early wood. So these are active and lighter in color. Whereas late wood they are uh, the wood which uh, they are thick walled and smaller in diameter, inactive. So the study, so dendrochronology, it is the study of, is uh, the study of, the st uh, study of the age of a tree by counting the annual rings. It is called as the dendrochronology. So each annual ring which corresponds the, Okay, each annual ring corresponds to one year's growth and on the basis of these rings. So generally, we already discussed that in a, each, a, each year, here the one annual ring attachment of one annual ring occurs, growth ring. So on the basis of these rings, so the age of the particular plant can be easily identified. So that the determination of the age of your tree by counting the annual rings, it is known as the dendrochronology. So sometimes two annual rings are also formed in a single year. So in such cases, the counting the annual rings does not show the correct age of the tree. So this happens mainly because of the drought conditions which are prevailed in the middle of a growing, growing season. So generally, every year only one annual ring will be formed due, due to some climatic conditions or due to change in the uh, change in the atmospheric conditions. So here the two annual rings may be produced here. So in that case, we cannot count the correct age of a tree. So in many tylosis, so another term is that is tylosis. So in many plants, the walls of the xylem vessels, which produce the balloon-like outgrowths into the lumen of the vessel. So these are called as the tylosis. So generally, when we observe the xylem vessels, so balloon-like outgrowths, we can observe the balloon-like outgrowths. So these are called as the tylosis. So usually these structures which are formed in secondary xylem only. So these tylosis are formed by the enlargement of the pit membranes of the half-bordered pits which are present between the parenchyma cells and the, and the vessel. So here in between the parenchyma cells, so generally here wood, components of wood, here the wood, xylem and xylem parenchyma. Uh, that is the components of vessels and parenchyma. So when we they when they are present, so in between these pits are present. So here these are formed the balloon-like structures which are formed. They are called as the enlarged um, enlarged balloon-like structures. These are called as the tylosis. So here when we observe here, so these balloon-like these are the tylosis. So due to which here they block the transport also. So here, these balloon-like structures. So generally, it mainly in conduction, which stops the conduction also. So that is the differences between the hardwood and sapwood. So that is sapwood. It is the outer region of the old tree. That is, the, uh, it is called as the sapwood. It is also known as the alburnum. Whereas the hardwood, it is also known as, it is the central region of the old trees. It is called as the hardwood. And it is also known as the duramen. So the sapwood, which consists of recently formed xylem, xylem elements. Whereas the hardwood, it is filled up with the tannins, resins, gums, and other substances. So it is uh, sapwood, in general, it is not hard and durable. Whereas the hardwood, which is durable, which can be persist more years. They can, uh, 
um, they can um, they can they can be uh, they can withstand high pressures also so here the sap food so this is the light colored and which contains some living cells and also in the association with vessels and fibers whereas the hard food it which looks like a black or dark brown due to the presence of various substances in it so generally the sap wood the vessels are not plugged with tylosis so generally in the sap wood the tylosis which we cannot observe the tylosis whereas in hardwood so generally we can observe the tylosis so sap wood the part of the stem which performs the physiological activities such as the conduction of water and nutrients and storage of food will take place in sapwood whereas the main function of the heartwood is the function of the heartwood is not the conduction but it gives only the mechanical support to the stem so this is about the heartwood and sapwood so again here based on the presence um, presence of arrangement of these vessels so again here this hardwood again classified into different types that is ring porous hardwood so here the ring porous hardwood means so some groups of the species mainly oaks and names the early wood are late wood transition which occurs abruptly that is which is stopped and it is very distinct with the each growth ring so a band of la large early vessels so generally, if the vessels are present in the wood, it is called as a porous wood. If the vessels are absent, it is called as a non-porous wood. Okay, so porous and non-porous. Generally, porous wood means with vessels. If the vessels are present, it is called as a porous wood. So generally, uh, this porous wood, which is seen in dicotyledons, so in dicotyledons, generally the xylem contains vessel. So it is called as a porous vessel, porous wood. Whereas in gymnosperms, vessels are absent. Hence, it is called the wood of the gymnosperms. It is called as a non-porous wood. So generally, this non-porous wood, it is also known as a hardwood and porous. Uh, so on, Porous wood generally it is called as the hardwood, whereas a non-porous wood it is called as the softwood. Here pores are present, so it is a hardwood. So based on the arrangement of these vessels, the general again it is uh, again based on the arrangement it is ring porous. So here a band of large early wood vessels is clearly visible to a, to the naked eye, and after which a band of late wood vessels, which appear much smaller and require the use of so uh, hand lens to see. So here these are the so here the arrangement of the vessels. Here they are arranged in a uh, ring uh, in a ring like manner. So it is called as a ring pore, a ring porous. So that is here the pores that is larger than those of the late wood. So here these are the larger pores. So hence it is called as the ring porous. So next one is the semi ring uh, semi ring porous hardwood. So here the it is seen in the black walnut and butternut and hickory. So the pore transition from the large to small diameter within the growth ring it is gradual so the pores in the early wood zone have a larger diameter that gradually decreases in size as as the pores enter the late wood so here this one is the late wood and here early wood in early wood so the pores have larger diameter whereas in late wood they are smaller in size so next one is a diffuse porous means the it is a last group of the space generally these are seen in um, the group has the pores that are uniform in size so here the pore that is pores means nothing but the vessels they are in uniformly arranged so uniform in size and uh, across the entire growth ring and these vessels are usually small uniform in size and are very difficult to see with the naked eye so diffuse means here they are uniformly arranged pores are uniformly arranged whereas in semi rings that is in the early wood here the larger one and in the late they are decrease in size whereas a porous here in early wood they are larger in size whereas in late wood they are smaller in size 
So based on the arrangement of vessels. So here the ring porous heart would again divide into uh, different types. So solitary pores. So here the single pores that do not touch any other pores evenly spaced across the cross section. So single single pores which is, which, which they are and do not connect with any other one. So these are called as the solitary pores. Vessels are free. So pore multiple. So here the arrangement of arrangement. So where two to five pores appear grouped together. So here the pores are arranged in groups. So the pore multi multiples usually occur in radial rows. Example for this is cotton wood, but can occur in both radial and also in the tangential directions. So pore chains. So here the arrangement of the arrangement where pores multiples appear in radial direction. So they are arranged in chains. So nested pores. So when the large number of pores contact each other, both radial and tangential. So here the cluster of pores, wavy bands. So pores are arranged in irregular concentric bands. So they are also called as uniform because this it is distinctive of the general. These are seen in imps that is in the strawberry. So here based on the so here in solitary only single pores they are not attached with any other pore multiples mean they are arranged in two to five pores it contains two to five so here pore chains they are also arranged in multiples nested means there are large number of pores which are contact each other both radial and tangentially wavy bands mean they are arranged irregularly so based on the arrangement of pores so Next one is the resin canals. So these are seen in the sap wood. So the first step after making the determination of the wood specimen is the soft wood due to the absence of pores. If the pores are absent, it is called as non-porous wood. So here inspect the cross-section surface for the presence of resin canals. So resin canals are tubular. These are the tubular passages in the wood that exclude pitch or resins. They release the resins to seal off wounds that occur due to the insect or mechanical damage. So these resin canals most generally occur in, uh, in or near the late wood zone of the growth ring. So soft wood can be separated into two classifications based on the presence or absence of the resin canal. So generally resin canals, these are seen in the sap wood. So these are the tubular, or tubular passages which are exudes, which are released from the uh, wounds when when the stem is uh, caused with wounds so here these resins are released out so species that have the resin canals include pines process larches and dogles douglas fir so the species that do not have the resin canals which includes firs hemlocks cedars redwood and baldy cypress and yew so these are the some of the examples of woods so wood with resin canals, which are separated into two groups. So those with the larger resin canals, these are seen in pines, and those with the small resin canals, doglar, pears, spruce, and larch. So using a sample wood, so generally for the identification of wood, so we can compare the size, uh, size and number of the resin canals of the different species. So it is also uh, specific to the different uh, types of the wood. So for example, most uh, pines have the quite large and numerous resin canals and that can be seen without the aid of the hand. So generally we can easily observe. Generally these are the large sized resin canals are seen in pines. So next one is the wood parenchyma. So parenchyma generally these are the small thin wall and longitudinal cells which that provide the food storage. So these cells are pre present in the softwood but are also often quite significant in the hardwood also. Generally these are softwood uh, wood parenchyma which is generally attached with the associated with the softwood only. So the parenchyma are often very small and difficult to see. So however there are many species with the visible and unique arrangement of the parenchyma cells that offer a clear structural future. So again, based on the uh, parenchyma, association with the parenchyma, again here, 
two types paratracheal and apotracheal parenchyma so paratracheal means the, the major difference between them is that so paratracheal parenchyma which make contact with the pores if the parenchyma which is attached with the pores it is called as a paratracheal pores are that is pores are nothing but the vessels so in the wood generally the if the vessels are present it is called as a porous wood so here the these are nothing here they are called as a pores so if the parenchyma which is as, uh, associated with the pores it is called as a paratracheal so apotracheal means without parenchyma so parenchyma are separated from the pores by a fibers are rays so in most species so apotracheal parenchyma are not be useful in identifying the wood with a just a hand lens. So paratracheal parenchyma which appear in many forms and is often more useful for the identification. So for example in hickory the banded parenchyma looks like a reticulate. So so here based on the arrangement of these parenchyma association of parenchyma with the vessel. So here two types that is paratracheal and apotracheal. So paratracheal means um, that is parenchyma which is attached with the pores it is called as a paratracheal. So next one is, uh, uh, that is teak, introduction about this uh, teak, that is tectona grandis. So it is a 